Hi guys, welcome back to Too Cool for Middle School. Today I'm doing another back to school tips video and this one is about my Chromebook procedures in my class. Last year our school went one to one with Chromebooks so every single student has their own Chromebook. They bring it home, they bring it back to school, they use it all day in class, they take it from class to class and it's been really nice because I have access to so much more content and more curriculum and I can do things much faster and push things out to my kids on Google Classroom. I don't have to waste as much paper. I don't have to waste as much time making copies. It's really, really nice and I like that education is moving in this direction. However, you have to stop and reflect about negative consequences that you know the Chromebooks are having on your classroom environment and then you just have to set up procedures to kind of mitigate those effects so I have four rules that I'm going to have in my classroom about Chromebooks now the only thing kind of like missing from these rules is that the Chromebook needs to be charged and that was actually my biggest pet peeve last year, the biggest source of frustration for me, for the kids, for all the other teachers, for the parents, for everybody. Here's the thing, in my personal opinion, even though I love the Chromebooks, I do not think that kids should be on them at break or at lunch. I do not think that is a time to be on Chromebooks. They are so useful as an educational tool, so useful in the classroom. They don't need them at snack. They don't need them at lunch. They need to be talking to each other. They need to be running around. They need to be playing. They need to be eating. They need to be getting a drink. They need to be going to the bathroom. Those are all things that like didn't happen last year. There'd be kids who went straight to lunch, got straight on a game, didn't talk to anyone, forgot to eat their food, forgot to go to the bathroom, forgot to get a drink, forgot to clean up all of their stuff, just ran straight back to class after they were on their game the whole time. And so I, Definitely do not support <laughs> devices being used during break times and especially because then they will come back to class and their Chromebook's dead and they can't do work for the rest of the day because they used up all the battery on these games or watching Netflix or watching YouTube videos and there's a time for that. They can do that before school, they can do it after school, they can do that at home. They do not need to be doing that during school hours so I am not in support of that. Plus then it messes up my lesson because you are supposed to have a Chromebook that you could use but it wasn't charged and all of the teachers do have two extra chargers that kids can borrow but that just takes time they've got to come get it from me this year I think I'm gonna have them like check it out and if you check it out three times you're gonna have detention and then they have to sit somewhere that has you know it's close enough to an outlet so that they can charge it and it's just a big mess and we wouldn't really have to deal with that mess if we didn't let them use the Chromebooks at break and at lunch. So that's kind of a separate issue. The other free tip that I have about Chromebooks is that if you're going to give these devices to the kids, you need to have an opportunity for parents to come and learn about the devices as well. So not only learn like how they work and how you can log into your child's computer and see everything that they've been doing, because that is possible, but most parents just don't know how to do it. Most teachers don't know how to do it either. So the adults need more education about like how these things work, but then also just some parenting tips about how to deal with these devices in your home. Not everybody needs to do things this way, but when Jensen gets older, if he has a device from school, it will not be in his room at night might not be in his room at all. I might require him to use it like at the kitchen table or in the living room so that I can see what he's doing on there. He definitely won't have it charging in his room at night because I know that these things are so addictive and I don't even blame kids for this, that they're on it all night. That's the way these things are set up. They are designed to get kids and adults on there as much as you can there's you know kids are like chatting at night or watching YouTube videos or scrolling through Instagram or whatever I do that too so for my kids I'm going to take their devices they'll be charging in my room where my kids can't get to them then they'll definitely be charged in the morning I'll give it to them to take to school and they'll use it as an educational tool or if it's a phone you know like to call me when they need to be picked up or whatever but I'm not going to make it convenient for them to have this technology addiction or give them the window to get onto something that I don't want them to be on. 
I'm gonna control it as much as I can. I know that I can't control everything and kids are curious and they might get into other things and I'm not always gonna be around, but I'm gonna set parameters so that as my kids grow up with technology, they're used to not having it in their room at night. They're used to having a few boundaries where you know you don't use it during dinner time or maybe on Sundays we can have like a screen-free Sunday or something like that. So you as the adult in your house or in your classroom have the responsibility to set some kind of culture and expectations around these devices. They do not have to take over your entire life. <laughs> so that being said, these are my four Chromebook rules that I'm going to have posted at the front of the room that every Every child needs to follow. The first one is that Chromebooks may not be used for games during class at all. Not if you're finished with your work, not because you're sneaking it in. Besides the not being charged issue, that was a very close second, was that instead of doing work, kids were playing games and then not getting their work done, uh, not hearing the directions, not having any idea what was going on. They would kind of sneak and sit in the corner or you know just kind of like turn themselves so that they could just play games all of class time instead of doing any work. So I'm just gonna have pretty much a zero tolerance rule about games. You can't be on them at all in my classroom. Now I of course like to use educational games as part of my instruction and part of my lessons so that is different. If we're playing Kahoot or whatever and some kid, because you know you're gonna have that kid that's like, but this is a game, I thought we weren't allowed to play games. This is the lesson. This is on the board and this is part of the instruction, this is the lesson. The thing that you want to do is a game so that's not gonna work. So no games. The second rule is that Chromebooks will remain closed until you are asked to open them. I literally have students who walk down the hallway from one class to another like this on their Chromebook, like still playing a game or watching a YouTube video or whatever, bumping into people in front of them and then come into my classroom, do not say hello to me, do not say hello to anybody else and just sit down at their desk and continue doing whatever it is that they're doing on their Chromebook. I don't even care what they're doing on their Chromebook, but it should not be open at that time at all. So you cannot walk into my classroom with an open Chromebook. It is going to stay closed until I tell you to open it. And really, the majority of my class time is probably going to involve Chromebooks. It's going to be open the majority of the day, but right at the beginning, I don't want those open. I have like a chant that we say at the beginning of class. I want kids to get their minds ready, to get focused. I have instructions that they need to hear and you cannot hear instructions when you are on your Chromebook. Even my husband tells me, he's like, you know you go deaf when you're on your phone, right? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, if you're down here looking like this on your phone and he tells me something, he's like, you don't even hear me. Because my mind is, you know, focused on this email I'm responding to or whatever. So you can't listen to instructions you can't prepare for the lesson while you're on your Chromebook so they won't be open the third one is that they must be on the desk when in use so I had a lot of kids last year who would just like put them on their their laps and kind of like try and hide things down here and I mean maybe for some that was just like it was comfortable or whatever but literally like when you see them from the side they're like hunched over like this like quasimodo style and they look like they're damaging every fiber of their being and that's not a position that you can like collaborate from i can't see your screen when i'm walking around to see who needs help or how far people have come or just making sure that you even found the right website or whatever and there were kids who literally every single day I had to tell them put your Chromebook on your desk so I'm not going to say that every single day anymore I'm just gonna put it on a bulletin board and point to it and if you can't get that down there are gonna be consequences so as a teacher especially a middle school teacher you often find like there are certain things you say every single day and then the next year those become like your top priorities for procedures. <laughs> the other thing was that we had a ton of damaged Chromebooks last year and um, since it was kind of just like the pilot like rollout year 
kids just got to take their damaged Chromebook that, you know, it had been like on their lap and then they like moved and fell or somebody walked past them, whatever, like tripped over the cord or whatever, and like their screen cracked. They just got to take it to the library, get a new one and come right back to class. There were kids who went through like seven or eight Chromebooks in a single year and had no consequences whatsoever. But this year, they're gonna have to pay for any repairs to their Chromebook. So I'm trying to help them out. I'm trying to help them keep it as safe as possible. If it's on the desk, they can keep it in um, like the case that we provide for them. So they just need to be in a comfortable place and in a safe place. I know that some of these things kind of like fly in the face of flexible seating, but so far we're not doing that in my room, so. I'm not opposed to it, it's just it would take a lot to figure out how to make it work, so maybe in the future. The last rule is that they must be at full brightness. Some kids just turn down the brightness because their battery is about to die and they had been playing games all of lunch and now, you know, they're trying to preserve their battery. But if you're responsible about charging it, then you don't need to do that anyway. And a lot of kids had the brightness down so that I couldn't see what was going on on their screen as I was walking around. Now we do have this program that's, it's like just our district's program, what is it called, school branch, where the kids can log in and then I can see all of their screens. But I have so many kids that like, I have to like scroll up and down constantly to see what is on their screens and I have to dedicate a whole computer just to that and so usually I have like my laptop dedicated to that and then I have like another computer that is projecting something up on the screen and then maybe I have my Chromebook. It's a lot of screens to deal with and at a certain point you have to decide, okay, am I like the video game police or am I a teacher? So if I have to look at that screen all the time, I'm stuck in one place, I have to be, you know, over here looking at it. It is useful because you can take screenshots and then you can email the parents and say, this is what your kid was doing during class, they were not on task, and so this is why they have detention or whatever. But I would prefer to monitor the screens like while I'm walking around so that I can talk to kids or so that I can, you know, stop and help somebody or I can like kind of get a better sense of how they're doing. Like I don't want to be monitoring them from this corner over in my classroom, you know? I mean that's useful and I'm still going to have my kids do that and I'll refer to it and what is Jensen doing over there? I don't know, I heard a plastic crash but I will wrap this up. So anyway. Um, they need to have their screens at full brightness just so that I can it's so that I can help them so I could see what is going on on their screen. So those are my four Chromebook procedures. I really like how they turned out in my classroom. I think they look really cute and a lot of people had asked for those and asked me to put them on Teachers Pay Teachers. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm trying to relaunch my blog. I looked at it the other day and it has been two years since I've posted anything on my blog. Last year was the baby, the year before that was like crazy schedule with um, finishing my masters and everything so that was why. But I'm trying to get more into my blog again and I think it's a good platform for things like this where I want to be able to give you some kind of a document. I can't really do that just through YouTube. so. I'm going to write a blog post, I'll put this video in it, I'll write a little explanation, and I will attach my Chromebook procedures into that blog post. So you can download them and you can just have them for free. I want to make like an editable version and you know maybe some with some different colors or something, but that's going to take me a little bit longer and I will put those on Teachers Pay Teachers and I'll provide a link to that when I do, but it's the beginning of the school year. I know a lot of people um, you know are starting right now like I am and you just want something to put up and, and you don't want to wait for the Teachers Pay Teachers thing. So I'm just going to give those to you for free. Just take them, use them, and if you want to make adjustments later, look out for my Teachers Pay Teachers version where you can change things. So I hope that's a good solution. I hope that that helps some people out. And if you have other suggestions for Chromebook procedures, please leave those below. I can always add to my Chromebook procedures. These are just the, the four things that stuck out in my mind from last year that drove me crazy. So these are the things that I'm starting off the year with this time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you over on my blog. That is linked below. Hope you're having a great school year. Bye.